Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my wrap up for October. Excuse my cat's tail here in the background, uh, she has decided that she wants to make her opinions known as well for this video. Um, October was a pretty slow reading month for, for me. I don't know what it is about October, but I always seem to end up in kind of a slump, which I then spend most of November trying to get out of. Uh, I started strong. Um, for those of you that might already know, I went away at the beginning of October on a reading retreat and I took a number of books away with me and purchased a number while I was away as well. I have actually uh, done a little book haul on that. I'll leave that linked in the cards. Um, and it started out really strong and then the rest of the month just seemed to drop off completely. So I managed to finish three books in total um, and I made some progress with two others. They gave me a total of 1,799 pages. They were all physical books that I read. Um, I did read a little bit of an ebook. Um, I read about half of an ebook. Um, but I'll go through the ones that I've kind of started but not finished. I'll give them an honourable mention right at the end. So let's talk about the books that I actually did finish. The first one I completed while I was away on the reading retreat and that is Rose Madder by Stephen King. I've talked about this book a heck of a lot on this channel. It is one of my all-time favourites um, and as uh, predicted it was a good read, a great reread for me. As always it kept me reading, it kept me going along. I know what happens in the book, I know pretty much know the sequence of events. There's some events that I kind of get out of sequence when I'm reminiscing about it. Um, but for this one, this reread, I wasn't quite so out of sync with it as I have been in the past. But again, thoroughly enjoyed it. And it is of the books I've read. Um, and I read it, finished the ones that I finished, I enjoyed them all. This is my favourite of the month. It has the top spot of um, October. Um, and yeah, for those who don't know, who haven't seen any of my previous videos or haven't seen it anywhere else on YouTube, uh, Rose Madder is about Rose McClendon who is running away from her violent husband. Um, she goes away to a distant city she, where she tries to hide from him um, and it's about what happens after that. Clearly the husband is chasing after her. Um, and there is a little bit of, I don't, I've never known how to describe this book. I think it is more thriller, but it's got a little bit of kind of fantasy slash magical realism thrown in towards the end. Um, I'm not quite sure how, I've never been sure how to classify it. To me, it's not horror. There is a moment, there is a sequence of events in this book which can be horrific. Um, it does have description, some description of violence um it has mentions of rape um miscarriage there are a lot of things in here that would be trigger warnings so um if domestic violence uh is a trigger for you this book is probably not for you but if you have enjoyed stephen king's books and you haven't read this one give it a go um it's actually one that i recommend people start with if they don't know where to start with stephen king and don't want to go full on horror this is where I recommend you start because this is my all-time favourite King book. It's also one of my all-time favourite books and I just can never get enough of it. And I'm, I will probably reread it again next year. The second book that I finished was one that I took on the reading retreat with me and wanted to read while I was away. I did start it while I was there, um, but I finished it after I came home. And that book is God Killer by Hannah Kaner. I adore this cover. This cover is gorgeous. Um, this is a first book in a series and it is about Kissen, who is a God Killer. Uh, you find out why she is a god killer right from the very beginning. It opens with a punch you in a gut um, type of chapter. It really does get going with the action from the start. But for a new fantasy world, um, it is well developed. Hannah Kana has a really good idea for this series behind her. Um, but she doesn't info dump it on you in any way. 
uh, it is delivered to you the information that you need is delivered to you as the story moves forward which I really appreciated and really enjoyed um, and you learn about it's not so much a magic system um, although I think there may be some underlying elements of magic because it is all about the gods and what the gods can do they are the ones with the powers not the uh, humans um, except some humans obviously must have something more because they can kill the gods um, and yeah I just really enjoyed it uh, I only gave it three and a half stars uh, that's probably not reflective of what I say of how much I enjoyed it um, I think just for me this was when I went to purchase this it was in the adult section and I've only ever seen it in the adult section of the bookshop but to me it reads more like a YA fantasy rather than an adult fantasy now I don't know whether what Hannah Kana has planned for books two which and three which I think she's actually in the process of writing book three now book two is due to come out in February next year um, and the cover has been revealed and the title and it's going to be called Sunbringer um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm stalking uh, Waterstone's website for when they release the special versions of um, because I can't believe that if they did signed versions of it with beautiful sprayed edges that they're not going to do that for Sunbringer as well. Why wouldn't you? People would want matching, at least, you know, people like me that need to have matching copies uh, are going to go and order it again. Um, so I am stalking Waterstone's website. It does leave you on a little bit of a, a little bit of a cliffhanger, so you're not quite sure what's going to come next for Kissin and the other characters that she meets and befriends along the way. Um, so yeah, I'm really intrigued with where the story's going to go from here. So I think it's a really good setup for a brand new series, and it's not heavy fantasy. Um, so if you don't read a lot of fantasy or you don't like the really deep epic world spanning you know um they're they're a good it's a good intro as well so yes definitely recommend god killer the final book that i finished and i was actually quite proud of myself for finishing this one um because i finished it four days before it needed to be finished um and that should tell you that it was our october book club choice for the cozy book club and we had picked killers of a certain age by deanna rayborn um I actually really enjoyed it. it I think we all actually really enjoyed it we all thought it was fun I have seen this marketed as a thriller um, and when we had our book club meeting we don't know whether this is a term we need to research it um, I haven't actually looked into it myself some of the others might have done but we've kind of coined the phrase cozy thriller you know we get cozy mysteries there's cozy romances there's cozy fantasy why not cozy thriller because this is how it comes across Yes, there are moments of high stakes, but they don't feel high stakes because this book is about a group of um, women who are in their, I would say their early to mid 60s, who are retiring as assassins. Um, and they find out that their bosses are trying to kill them and they have to work out why. And it's from there that certain action scenes happen and action scenes are happening for them as the elderly women. You also get flashbacks to um, their younger days to get some background on them and the people that they are. But yeah, the the, the peril that I felt uh, reading this was more, I was more concerned. I wasn't concerned that one of them was going to die. I was actually concerned that one of them would break a hip. Um, I found that more troubling <laughs> during the action sequences than anything else. Um and for me, and I, I said this on the book club meeting as well, for me, I kind of, if you've seen both Murder, She Wrote and James Bond, um, the, the TV series and the films, it's like the two of them have gotten together and had a baby and this is what was produced. It's good fun. Um, if you want something that has got some high stakes but not really high peril, uh, this is a good one. I um, really enjoyed it and would definitely... I don't, I don't know the way this is left. I'm not sure if there's going to be more from these characters. Um, I kind of feel like there might be. I don't know. Um, or that it might lead 
somewhere maybe not these characters but maybe some other characters might come into play um but yeah it was certainly a good start for a series if it is going to be a series um but if not it was tied up quite neatly at the end as well uh for our four main characters highly recommend it um I did make more progress with some books. Now, I had said at the beginning of the month that I was going to try and make some progress and finish possibly Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan and Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. Now, I started really strongly with these. I took them away with me and between them, I read a fair few hundred pages um, of the 17, 1800 pages that I've read this month. Quite a few of those were actually from those two books. I didn't finish them, um, but I did make some progress and I do feel some momentum towards um, finishing them now and, and moving forwards with them. I mean, Lord of Chaos, I'm nowhere near halfway through. I think now I'm about a quarter of the way through it, a good quarter of the way through it. Before they're hanged, I don't actually have that much left of it. So I think if I'm trying to, if I, if I want to feel... Um, like I need to finish something, then that's definitely one I could pick up this month. And then I also need to give an honourable mention to Moving Pictures by Terry Pratchett. I got about 40% of the way through that one. Uh, that one is based around um, the movie business um, in the Discworld. Again, I'm... I th the, this is where I lose my way with Terry Pratchett a little bit. I kind of got fully on board with the Nightwatch series, with the Death series, and to some extent, extent with the Wizard series. But the ones that are more day-to-day -day and don't include characters that crop up regularly in other storylines and have their own arcs, I tend to lose my way and I, I, I struggle to, to get through them. Um, but again, it's another one that during the month of November I could pick up and make some progress with and actually finish. So yeah, that was my hopefully brief wrap up of October. I hope you had a better October than I did. I'm hoping for a better November. Um, it hasn't started as strongly, but then we're at the point that I'm filming this, it's the 5th of November. Come on. I need to give myself a break here. Uh, but yes, hopefully um, November will be slightly more successful in terms of the numbers that I read. But I'm looking forward to it. Let me know how you did in October in the comments down below. I love to see what everyone else is doing. If you've enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.